How we doing, how we doing? This is Destination Denver, Colorado. And today I'm giving you 10 reasons you do not want to move to Colorado in 2024. And we're starting right now. All right, this is Destination Denver, Colorado. I'm your host, Jim Everett, and listen, if you're interested in learning all the ins and outs, pros and cons to moving to or around Denver, Colorado, then this is a channel for you. So that subscribe button and notification icon you see on your screen, make sure you click on that as I'm dropping new videos for you each and every week. And as much as I try to be a little creative and informative here on camera, I'm also a licensed mortgage broker covering the entire state of Colorado and team with some of Denver's most talented realtors. And we are helping people move here each and every day. So the number and email you see, Know that I'm always the person, answer your phone call, answer your text, answer your email, there when and if you need me. Now that we're done with that fun filled stuff, let's get to what we're here for, and that is 10 reasons you do not want to move to Colorado in 2024. So first up on the list is, is always the elephant in the room, and that is the rising cost of living and housing affordability here in Colorado. And, and I mean, we're not just talking about Denver Metro, we're, to, we're talking about areas up into Boulder. We're talking about getting north into Longmont and Fort Collins. We're talking about moving south into Castle Rock and, and Colorado Springs, and certainly in the mountain towns. So Colorado has been a, a big destination for a lot of people. And, and Denver saw a lot of that growth in the early 2010s, but Colorado as a whole has seen that. You know, we look at certain areas and we talk about the affordability of those. Uh, I use Fort Collins as an example. Fort Collins is a very popular area about two hours north of Denver. And the locals of Fort Collins, or at least my, my friends that live in Fort Collins, they kind of share that they feel that press now where more people are looking for affordability outside of Denver. So they start to move to areas like Fort Collins. Colorado Springs has seen that. And mountain towns, you know, you're, you're going to see that certainly from a housing standpoint, because there's only so many houses to be had, but because of the desirability. And when once we saw people start to begin to work remotely, mountain towns were now uh, the rage. You know, you didn't have to drive into a city to work anymore. If I wanna live an hour and a half into the hills, I can. And so the home prices and cost of living in the mountains certainly skyrocketed. Second, and this is really gonna depend on what area of Colorado you are in, but if you're around any type of major city, uh, it's going to be traffic congestion. So definitely within Denver, traffic congestion is a, a, a big drawback. You tend to see it still in the Colorado Springs, in areas of Boulder, uh, even in the mountain towns. You know, we talk about I-70, our, our main corridor going east and west, getting backed up at times. The more people there are in Colorado, the more that traffic congestion builds. Depending on where you are, public transportation can be hit or miss. Denver's public transportation overall gets a pretty good rating in comparison to at least other major cities that we've checked out. Not to say that it compares to a New York, a Boston, a Chicago, anything like that, but it does okay. Once you get outside of Denver, that really starts to take a hit. So, uh, you know, Boulder has a pretty good bus system, but you know, mountain towns, if you're getting up to Fort Collins, your public transportation may not be as reliant. The last thing I would add to that is, and I thought this was just a Denver thing, but we talk about seasonal road maintenance. So especially as you get into the fall and into the winter, road construction is never fun anyway. Tag onto that any construction, any road maintenance they're doing, along with inclement or bad weather, and, and the work they do on the roads can make that traffic even more challenging. Third, and, and this is really all tied in together, I want to talk about the wildfire risk that, that Colorado has and, and also our water situation here. So I'll start with, with wildfires. Uh, Colorado has certainly seen its fair share. Over the last few years, uh, a lot of the smoke that we've seen, we've seen some really rough air in Colorado and, and around Denver recently. Most of that has come from fires in Colorado and Canada. We have our own problems. I'm not trying to say we don't. So, but wildfires continue to be a threat here, especially as you get into the front range. For a lot of people who are thinking about buying a mountain property, that's one of the more interesting aspects is trying to see how homeowners insurance will be affected uh, by those fires. But with that, you also have water scarcity. Denver itself is a high plains desert. There's only so much water in Colorado. And then you talk about limited water rights. So. The issues that you might see nationally in Arizona, uh, Nevada, 
those areas, they, they draw water from the Colorado River. Uh, certainly Colorado is impacted and, th and certainly there are water uh, right issues and water scarcity. Uh, we talk about it a lot in the Denver metro area. Again, going back to that being a high plains desert. There are certain developments that want to be built here and around Denver. And the reason they're not is because of getting water rights to those locations. So certainly something to keep in mind. Not to say that water rights necessarily tie into wildfires, but I thought that those uh, really overall rather than break those out into five different topics i break them into one for you fourth and this really depends on on what people enjoy but the the variable weather some people love it some people love the fact that it could be sunny rainy snowy uh, and some people can't stand it so colorado's weather changes quickly especially and you, know, you look at the mountains you could get absolutely blitzed with snow uh, we always talk about being around denver metro that the weather could change multiple times in a day you could wake up in the morning it's snowing starts to get sunny, rains in the afternoon, could be all over the place. So that weather variable can really drive some people crazy. Fifth, and, and this is something that I talk to people about who were, who were moving here or who have moved here, and that's the cultural diversity of the state as a whole. Um, you know, I think Colorado has made some leaps and bounds and certainly around the Denver area, diversity has improved. We've always had a large Denver had a large white and a large uh, Hispanic or Latino population. That that has always been the case. Um, as far as you know, becoming more of a mixing pot, that has taken time. When you talk about mountain towns, when you talk about areas outside of Denver, um, you know that diversity at times it, it can be limited. You know, to to speak plainly, and that is feedback that I get from people in some of these communities. So. Uh, if that is important to you, that might be something, depending on the region of Colorado you're in, that you do not like, or that you would like to see more of. That might be a better way of putting that. So the next few are more nature-based. And so next up, number six, is the impact of allergies. And I, I just have to share this because I know for me, come springtime or really coming May, June, uh, my allergies can go absolutely crazy. Now it depends, there's parts of uh, Colorado where I can be, I don't feel allergies at all. And then I drive a mile over and all of a sudden I am just sniffly, runny nose and, and all of the things. So allergies can be a major issue for some people. Uh, it can absolutely buckle you at times. And as Colorado has grown and as it's become more popular, not just for people moving here, but people uh, visiting, the pressure on outdoor recreational areas has grown. What I mean by that, so if you're going skiing or snowboarding, if you're going on a hike, if you're going to some of these more popular outdoor attractions, the amount of people there has grown. Uh, so there are certain, you know, certain days, if you wanna go skiing on the weekend, you're probably gonna stand in some long, some long ski lines, especially if you're going to some of the more popular resorts. Um, if you're going on hikes, you know, there, there was a time where you'd go to a trail and maybe you would see, you know, a few other hikers. Now, uh, again, you go to a more popular trail, there might be just people everywhere. Uh, it's not to say it's the worst thing in the world. And I think it really depends on what day of the week or, or when you're going. You know, I know people who they're, they're big skiers and they say, man, if I go up on a, I'm looking to see if my mic is there. Uh, if they go up to the mountains to ski in the middle of the week, not nearly as bad. If you go on a Saturday afternoon, it is. So that, that overcrowding issue um, can, can really affect some people and it, it may very well depend on when you are able to take advantage of some of these amenities. Tying into that, I would talk about the power of the sun um, and the fact that, you know, with the higher altitudes, uh, you know, radiation or these UVs, they really hit you. And I mentioned that now, especially as we're talking about getting into the winter months. So, you know, I'm used to, you live in places, the summer, the summer might get you, but you're not really thinking about sun exposure in the winter. It's a thing. And especially if you're getting into the mountains, you're getting in, you know, you're, you're skiing, you're snowboarding. I went ice fishing last year for the first time. And here I am, I've got my cap on, I've got, I've got everything. I'm thinking, you know, I'm covered from the sun. You can call me a dummy later, but I didn't think about the bounce back, the reflection from the ice. I got fried from the sun hitting the ice and burning me. So it's a real thing, that sun exposure, uh, certainly something to think about. And these last handful were things that, again, people that, that moved here or have lived here for a while, I, I spoke to them 
And it, it's funny that I kept hearing it. These weren't things that I would have thought of naturally. So ninth is, is gardening and some of your limitations on gardening. So because of the, the weather here and because of the soil here, there's only certain certain plants that can grow. You only have so much of a, of a window. Um, the soil can be pretty alkaline, so it can, it can really affect, again, what you can grow and how much your yield is. So if you are, if you're big into gardening, you're big into growing things, um, that can be a drawback living in Colorado. Tied into gardening, I thought was also food. So as you go to higher elevations, um, cooking is different. So I have people who um, move here and I, I think this mainly impacted baking, but it affected their, their time and how long something needed to bake. So for my bakers, people who love being in the kitchen, uh, moving to a higher altitude can affect that. It sounded like it's something that you adjust to, something you adapt, but it really threw people off at first. And then, as I mentioned, so many people, you know, we, we this, this channel is called Destination Denver, Colorado. I talk to a lot of people who are moving around Denver, but there's a ton of people moving to Colorado that want nothing to do with Denver. So one thing, the, the feedback I have gotten from those people is that it, it's pretty easy to kind of feel isolated or get rural when it comes to Colorado. I mentioned that there's only so many, like, substantial cities. So once you start getting into the suburbs of Denver, once you start getting into other towns, and certainly once you start getting into the mountains, one, you can get rural pretty quick. Uh, there's there's talk that there's not a lot of nightlife. A lot of these towns, a lot of these suburbs, and, and, and you know, towns like a Boulder, a town like uh, a Fort Collins, they can get quiet pretty early. You know, eight, nine, 10 o'clock, there's not a lot going on. You see that in the mountain towns uh, as well, to some extent. So. The idea that you can live in areas that, that quiet down pretty quick and there's not a lot of nightlife and not a lot of activity and also that you can feel that isolation. And I really feel that for people who live um, not not like deep mountain towns, but even towns like a Morrison, towns like an Evergreen, where again, things quiet down and, and you're just kind of isolated out there a little bit. And last thing, especially around Denver and around kind of the plains of, of Colorado uh, is hail. And hail is something that, uh, you know, I never really mentioned in videos when I first started, but hail is, is a big deal. It, it impacts people, it impacts their homes and cars. Um, and so hail is something that when we talk about natural disasters, you know, I'm the type, I think about tornadoes, earthquakes, uh, you know, certainly hurricanes, hail, in its own way, definitely impacts Colorado. It does a lot of damage to property, it affects insurance. So hail is something you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind um, and pay attention to what areas that you are thinking of living in. Uh, hail is mainly, like I said, a Denver metro area issue, not to say that it doesn't occur um, elsewhere, but I don't think, you know, if, if you're living in the mountains, you're probably much more concerned with blizzards and a ton of snow than you are hail, um, but Again, yeah, just depends on where you are. But listen, I told you that was 10 reasons. I gave you 12 because I figured, you know, you needed that little bonus because at the end of the day, Colorado is a pretty awesome place to live. So even after those 12, I have a feeling that you're still kind of kicking it around and that's why you're still watching at this point. So that is a great time to call me, to tell me how silly I am for some of the things on my list or maybe to say, that you agree with some who knows, but the number and email popping up on your screen, know that I'm always the person, answer your phone calls, answer your texts, answer your emails, there when and if you need me. That was Destination Denver, Colorado. I am your host, Jimmy Everett. That was 10 reasons you do not want to move to Colorado in 2024. Until I see you next time.